Okay, here is another sputum specimen, and this time uh, we have a 32-year-old uh, male uh, who's suffering from pneumonia. Now, when we went ahead and did the gram stain or the direct smear from the specimen, it was an acceptable specimen, meaning that there were plenty of PMNs and very few epithelial cells. Uh, and also there was just exclusively pleomorphic gram-negative rods. And pleomorphic means of different shapes and sizes. Uh, all right. So bearing that in mind, we're going to go ahead and take a look at our plates here. Now, uh, this sputum specimen, if I didn't say it before, is a lower respiratory specimen. Uh, so the type of pathogens that we're looking for, probably like Streptococcus pneumoniae, Haemophilus influenza, Staph aureus, Candida species, meaning yeast, uh, members of Enterobacteriaceae, Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Those are probably you know the more common pathogens that we're going to see. So let's go ahead and see if any of those are uh, present on these plates. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our sheep blood here. Now, usually we would have a CNA, but uh, it, it didn't get set up on this particular culture. Oh, okay. So, really, almost nothing. So there's like a one or two colony types over here. Or I, mean, so I shouldn't say colony types, just one or well, two colonies only. Now, that's a little bit strange in itself because... You know, usually from a sputum specimen, we would expect some kind of normal flora. I guess if this was just the, the absolute ideal specimen coming from deep in the lungs, then maybe we wouldn't see any. But it's a little bit strange that nothing is growing here. <coughs> All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the chocolate. All right, now the chocolate definitely has growth. Now, why is that? Why would we have growth on a chocolate plate and not a sheep blood plate? So what is it that chocolate contains that allows an organism or organisms to grow? Now, when I look at this plate, I see just one colony type. So um, we'll come back to this, but let's just kind of, of course, remember that, that we have no growth here and we have a lot of growth on the chocolate. All right, our McConkies, so absolutely no growth. So that allows me to completely rule out members of Enterobacteriaceae and Pseudomonas. All right, so let's go back here. So what are you guys thinking? What pathogen uh, grows only on chocolate? All right, so is it Streptococcus? Streptococcus uh, pneumoniae, no, that would show up here on the sheep blood. It would be alpha hemolytic. And if it were growing on the chocolate, uh, it would probably have a green halo around it. Um, let's see here. Is it, is it Staph aureus? Well, no, a Staph aureus, you know, would be growing on the sheep blood. And if you recall, Staph aureus on, tends to, on chocolate, kind of have that golden color. That's where it gets its name from. So, uh, and candida, or yeast, once again, that would be growing on the sheep blood as well. So there's really only one of our common pathogens that fits this pattern, and that's Haemophilus influenza, because we know that Haemophilus influenza requires X in V factors, right? So X is heman, and V is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. Say that three times. And uh, she, uh, sheep blood as a rule, contains X extracellular, extracellularly, but intracellularly is where the V factor is. And that's why when we boil sheep blood, we get chocolate, and it releases that NAD or, or, or V factor. And for that reason, that's why Haemophilus is able to grow on chocolate. All right, so we're going to send a preliminary report out here to the doctor before we go ahead and work this up. 
And uh, like I said, uh, in this type of culture, we would expect some kind of normal flora on, on sputums or lower respiratory specimens. So I'm going to, first of all, say no normal oral flora. And then I'm going to quantitate what I have here. So few, moderate, uh, sorry, rare, few, moderate, many. So we're going to go ahead with many probable Haemophilus influenza identification and susceptibility testing to follow.